Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, January 25th. I'm Jane Johnston with the Buyer Hill Group at Remax Camos, and welcome to the Victoria Real Estate Show with... Hey, everybody. It's Andrew Plank with Royal Page and the Vibe Real Estate Group. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, yeah, good. Really good. Uh, I held my breath yesterday for four minutes. Oh, really? Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, I took, I'm starting a, took a, taking a free diving course. So we had some fun with that. Uh, well, not fun with that. It's part of the course. So we were in the pool and doing all kinds of oh. breathing exercises and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, good times. Uh, there's and, uh, busy. there's busy a fun there. guy to follow on Instagram for that, who um, I think he's called the 10 minute guy or something. Anyway, they have some funny videos where people are going up and down in the pool. I'll send it to you. Okay. Please. How is how is real estate going? Good. Yeah, things are really starting to pick up. I'm noticing uh, quite an uptick in calls and interest and showings, um, everything. So uh, that's good. And of course, we're, I was really glad to see that there was uh, a positive announcement from the Bank of Canada, positive from a real estate perspective. Uh, right. So we'll be having Jen so, Lowe talking to us about that today, which is exactly. nice. Uh, I am in Las Vegas. I flew here last night. I'm here for the weekend uh, for a business conference. So uh, should be fun. <laughs> you look so excited. You just look so happy to be there. It's not my comfort zone. I, I posted something like going from, you know, a very moist environment in uh, Machosan <laughs> and walking through the forest to the bright lights. And last night I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I thought it was daytime. <laughs> wow. Just because all the city lights. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird. The, they have this thing called blinds and you can put them down and up in your hotel room and it helps to darken the place. <laughs> I know. I was so excited though, to see what was going on. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's get to the yeah. stats. because That's what people are here for. Yeah. So, let me just get the right format here. So uh, it's uh, January 25th, and we're today talking about Victoria Real Estate and the Bank of Canada update. We have Jen Lowe here, and um, I cannot get the right format. There we go. All righty. Sorry. So first of all, actually, if you learned anything today or if anything's of interest, maybe to one of your friends, please share us and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to us. We do depend on those subscriptions to keep our show going and we'd love to hear your comments. If you want any information covered, please let us know. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. I'm going ahead. I will go ahead with January 25th. Um, we will look at the um, last week, and we've got 183 uh, new listings in the last week, and we've got 129 properties went pending in the last week. So we've got a pretty, pretty substantial listing to pending ratio. Um, you will remember in the fall we were seeing this purple line much, much shorter compared to the green. 43 properties did decrease in price. Not everything is selling. Three price increases, zero back on market, 61 properties transacted, 37 properties expired unsold. They were either undesirable or overpriced or something with that. 10, 10 properties were withdrawn. Somebody changed their mind or something happened for them to take them off market. Compare this to um, now, this is a couple of weeks before January 11th. So actually, um, it's January 18th. I just forgot. It is January change. 18th. Okay. So Use your imagination and the second digit there is an eight, not a one. So we've got January 18th, we had 219 properties go um, uh, come on market. 111 went uh, pending, 51 increased in price, <laughs> 51 price decreases, zero price increases, four back on market, 104 sold, 44 expired and five withdrawn. You can see that purple line, the difference between those two even then. Yeah, I'm just surprised a bit that uh, the new listings are down from last week, which it's interesting to me. But I guess like for me, um, I was waiting for the Bank of Canada announcement before we put up some listings. So just see. Yeah, we might see a big boost. Yeah. 
I don't Might remember people who held on that. I don't remember being so in tune with with the announcement as we are right now. Seems to me there's more awareness. I don't think it was as um, crucial or or critical to a buying or selling. You know, it 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 obviously affects price, but it wasn't changing as rapidly. It wasn't as much in the news, and it it wasn't as you know rates haven't been this high for quite some time. So okay. every little bit counts. All right. right. So I can barely read this. We're at, I think, 200, is that 278 net unconditional sales? That's compared to 181. Uh, sorry, we're at 181 for January of 2024. That's compared to 278 for January 2023. New listings are at 604. That's compared to 805. 640, sorry. Mm -hmm. And total active listings is 2108. That's compared to 1739. <laughs> I'm doing the trombone here. I'm so tired. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you a list. <laughs> but uh, it's, that's interesting to me. Uh, we're down year over year. So uh, I think for active listings. Their breath. Yeah, yeah. Active listings are down. Uh, when you look at this net unconditional sales at 181, we are only at January 25th, so that's compared to a full year in January 2023. But um, a full month. Yeah, uh, that's true. A full month. Thank you. Um, we're going to yeah, just correct each other all through this. <laughs> so, that's okay. Um, so it just—I I think a lot of people were waiting and seeing because uh, I think maybe there's there's I don't know more savviness well, around what's happening with the rate and how that potentially affects prices based on what's happened over the past few years. So watch for this next week and the coming weeks. Um, suspect that there will see a bump, bump if people have been holding off. I do think that people are, I've been encouraging people to get ahead of the spring in terms of buying. In terms of selling, I think it's probably not going to harm you to wait. I think that we'll see probably increase in uh, buyer activity and uh, therefore, increase in potentially values. Um, so, but from a buying perspective, I think it's a good idea to be getting ahead of the game. Yeah. Based on what okay. we're seeing, what do you think, Jane? Um, I agree. Um, we definitely have people out there looking. We we find it's an interesting time because there are a lot of people who. Um, I see on my matrix kind of went off the search mode for December because they were distracted with other things happening with family. And uh, well, I get that. And um, we did have consistent sales for our team in December. So um, we were encouraging people to, to write offers when the market was slower. Um, and I think right now everyone has just been holding their breath waiting. And I do think it's seen well, Based on uh, talk in the office, it looks like we're going to have more listings coming up. So I do think we'll have a bump. Hopefully that'll mean a, a big market for um, for sellers, but hopefully there won't be a glut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway. Yeah, if, All there's right. been a, an, if there's been a, um, a lot of people holding on listing their homes and waiting to list their homes for prices to come back, for um, for demand to come back, then once that is perceived to be there and a whole bunch of properties dump on the market, then we will again, you know, we'll flutter. We the uh, the, the the plane will uh, the plane will will stall. <laughs> yeah. So we may see we may see a bump in listings, but we may see prices actually come down if there's a lot of listings. I'm thinking. If there aren't mm -hmm. a lot of listings and if things remain kind of balanced and we see a hold on rates, then I'm I'm perceiving that we'll have a run on the market, a good run. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that um, I, I know we want to move on, but a lot of people um, do want to sell and buy. And I find that people timing the market, um, they do... It's that jump between the two properties that makes it hard for them. And so people are waiting for the right moment. And so I find that we don't see the same dumping of properties coming on market anymore where they're just like, well, let's just sell because we can buy something. 
you need to find enough inventory to buy before you decide to sell. Um, and that seems yeah. to be sort of self-fulfilling and it has been for a number of years where we keep the inventory low. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let's bring Jen Lowe on. She's with the Modern mm -hmm. Mortgage Group. Hello, Jen. Good morning. How are you guys? How are you? Good, how are you? Good, Jen. good, good. I saw so, you multitasking there. I was making a couple notes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> So we have um, this, I, I, I found this graph on a Bank of Canada site. So um, the solid lines are the interest rates announcement and inflation is the red line. So we can see after COVID, well, we were very steady pre-COVID. Um, we had a um, flat line there for inflation. And then during COVID, uh, we had negative inflation rate. And then um, they dumped a lot of money into the economy and that caused a lot of people to spend and we went crazy. And then that's when the interest rates uh, started going up. We had like seven or eight increases over time. And then we're seeing um, they're trying to bring it down. So the goal is 2%, which is, uh, I'm told, a made up goal. And that's fine. Um, Between 2 and 3%. Two and three percent, yeah. So I'm just wondering. Um, part of that uh, inflation is based on the price of housing, the cost of mortgages and rents, and all of that. So it is sort of like a an it's oxymoron. Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest contributor to inflation is housing costs and or your your um, shelter costs. Mm -hmm. So the higher so, the interest rates for those people who are on interest. It, yeah, it just it cycles itself back up. Yeah. Yeah. So they need to drop rates. Okay. So what are you? Um, that was great. What are the banks saying? <laughs> Sorry, go what ahead, to, guys. Come on. With yeah. your, <laughs> what is the bank saying? What are the, what are they saying in terms of the interest rates and stuff like it, like mortgage lending and what what's happening? Basically, I mean, on um, with the announcement yesterday, our Dominion Lending has a chief economist, Dr. Sherry Cooper, um, and I enjoyed a great presentation from her yesterday. Um, her take on it, yes, there's their Bank of Canada is hinting that they're easing um, and they're definitely not going to be raising rates um and the timing of when rates start coming down they're suggesting um june but um there's definitely a bit of debate that the bank of canada may be forced to re uh, or reduce rates prior to june forced by who forced. not f because of the overall economy and all the measures that come up with how they determine what the overnight lending rate is going to be, whether they're going to keep it um, at uh, 5% or reduce it. Right. So they've been course correcting for some time. And if, if they feel like they're going to hit, they're going to be aiming toward the rocks soon, they've got to, closer they're getting to those rocks, they've got to make an adjustment much more forcibly. Uh, the other there. challenge, too, is the amount of um, um, immigration we have in Canada and mm -hmm. um, the reduction in housing starts. Um, it's so expensive to build homes um, that there's, I mean, it, it, there's one um, new housing start for every five uh, new Canadians, I believe, was the stat we were given yesterday, and and that's a huge problem. Right. Wow. So, um, well, I mean, that's a problem. So the, what they're trying to do is limit immigration over the next two years after last year saying that they were increasing it. So this is funny to me, but... Um, we're welcoming the immigrant. We're welcoming, I mean, that, but they're not... Um, how do we house them? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a ban on um, foreign students over the next two years. Did you guys read about that? So that's going to really lower the 
the immigration. And so it's going to affect local economies too, because these, these schools, um, mostly smaller schools, bringing kids, apparently the education's not that great, but they're looking, I guess, to influence these young kids and get them speaking English. And um, they're going to impact, uh, they're going to impact um, the immigration that way that was, I guess, decided on Monday or something like that. I mean, mm. I, I understand that. And then we have the foreign buyer ban still happening. And then we have the U.S. election, which may push mm. people this way too. Like, I don't know. I think, I don't uh, know. This, is a, this is a topic for another day, but I think that when, you know, you do bring up the cost of building a house, you know, um, I, I wonder how much this has to do with, you know, as time moves on, we've got more stringent building codes and, and of course the co and, and some more complicated materials and building a home and more specialized uh, requirements uh, on getting specialized tradespeople in. I mean, if you were to build a home in the, in the 60s, um, maybe it was a little simpler. Uh, and of course there was also access to more timber and so forth. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's a lot of factors, but it's interesting that the, it's just the cost of building, and you could say it's the cost of land too, but you can always, we have a lot of land in Canada. It's not like, I mean, if you want to be in Victoria or Vancouver, Toronto, Calgary, um, that, that area, those areas are really expensive, but you can go to outlying areas and find land really cheap. We can, well, we can accommodate people, but we need to find roofs for them. Yeah. I'm, and further to that, once interest rates do start decreasing, um, normally, uh, what happens is house prices start going up, that good old supply and demand. Um, mm -hmm. Added to that, 60% um, of all Canadian mortgages are up for renewal in the next three years. That's a huge number. Yeah. 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 So there's a big lump of mortgages coming due within a three-year span. How, like, what, what's the average of coming due in a three-year span? I guess it'd be more like 30%. That's a good question. That I don't know. Okay. I would say, I mean, when we go back three years, I mean, um, the market was pretty crazy. Interest rates were lower. Lots mm -hmm. of people got in. I mean, it, it's interesting to compare. There's always so much comparison, the Canadian um, versus the U.S. Um, the U.S., are much better off than we are here on if you own a home um your interest rate is guaranteed for 30 years and you do not have to um or you you're able to write off the mortgage interest and i learned yesterday apparently your, your property taxes are also a tax write-off hmm. interesting yeah your taxes are a tax write-off that's that's crazy yeah wow <laughs> Usually, usually I'm, I'm concerned like, about taxes on taxes. Yeah. Now, I knew the mortgage nice. interest across the board, uh, primary home huh. versus rental, it doesn't matter. Um, and the fact that they have that guaranteed rate for 30 years, whereas in Canada here, your mortgage is coming up for renewal. Usually people go with the five-year term. So every five years. What, yes. One of the issues, though, with the, with the U.S. right now is the fact there's lack of inventory because nobody wants to sell because they have such great interest rates. So everyone is, mm -hmm. is building up equity. You're going to have a huge case of have and have nots there. That'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. to see too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't I, have the I, same affordability issues in the U S that we do here because people's housing cost, you know, they're your, your main expense is your um, shelter um, that has gone up so much. In Canada. In Canada, yeah. And as you said, you know, with interest rates going down, housing prices go up. That's actually impetus for builders to start building again. Like we, the Bank of Canada wants to keep um, the economy from stalling or whatever they're trying to do. But the higher prices is not necessarily a bad thing. It's what like developers aren't going to build for a loss. So they're only going to build yeah. something if they can get more money for it than Across Canada, another stat that I wrote from our meeting yesterday was the cost of construction has increased 51% since COVID. 
Wow. Yeah. So wow. there's not a lot of, there's too much skin in the game right now. There's not a lot of profit available to, to builders. Plus I, my understanding is the, um, the process, the development process at the municipalities is, is a bit onerous as well. So they're looking to streamline that. And that's one of the reasons why they're changing all the, um, plans, official community plans and zoning should be reflective of one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I it's, mean, I, it, I to think... me, go ahead. Sorry, Jane. To me, it's, it's going to be a real year of change. Yeah. It feels like it's going to be a big shift. Yeah. So Jen with 60% of mortgages coming up in the next three years, what do you anticipate I mean, outside of the Bank of Canada, what do you anticipate actual lenders doing and the impact on lenders as a result of that? Because um, how will they um, how will they respond to that? Are they going to change their are they going to charge more because they know they can? Or is it, how does this how does this impact the, the consumer um, outside of Bank of Canada? When your mortgage is up for renewal, you've got um, sort of you've got two options. You can either sign on the dotted line with your lender. Usually, what they're offering is a rate slightly higher than what you could get at another bank. Um, mm. So, definitely recommend reaching out to a mortgage broker to look at okay, what you know is this rate great? If not, let's see what other options there are for you. Um, and it's no cost to transfer your mortgage to another lender. Um, from a qualifying standpoint, we do have to get income um, verification for the most part, but there's definitely rumblings. Um, if your mortgage is existing and you're not asking for any new money transferring from one lender to another, um, there is limited qualification requirements. So I they're going to be more competitive. Yes. So they're not they're um, they're making it so that you're not stuck to your bank. Okay. So they're looking to shuffle more money around in terms of their own like the little more fluidity and people being able to move between lenders. Yes. To avoid that, banks are going to just charge a higher rate because they know you can't move. Oh. Okay. So if you can move, you might get a better deal or yeah. um, more attractive. But if you can't yeah. move because you don't qualify anymore, you're stuck at a higher rate. Yeah. So basically Ooh, don't okay. assume that, oh, you know, you just changed jobs or you're recently retired. I won't qualify. I just have to sign with my bank. No, don't assume that. It's always worth um, reaching out to your mortgage broker and um, taking a look at it um, to see what your best options are. I almost wonder because, you know, we have this joke about, you know, don't, don't buy a new car just before <laughs> closing um <laughs> the same the same would go on renewal right yeah so yes. that's probably something to reach out to clientele you know a year before their their renewal and say like look you know if you're on the edge for being uh getting an approval or even if not don't you know you're probably better off being able to switch horses switch banks so mm -hmm. make sure that you're still in, in a position where you qualify mm-hmm and depending on the bank, we can look at it really honestly, like six months prior to the maturity date. You mm -hmm. don't want to, I mean, if you're, your rate 90%, 90% chance, I would say, is lower than what your new rate is going to be. However, we can start looking at it and get a rate secured for your maturity date. Right. Do you find a lot of people also start to requalify themselves before they decide to move homes. I mean, this is a step we, we always recommend at the Briar Hill group that people talk to the lender and the mortgage broker and just see what their potential is basically like if they're requalifying to purchase a home. Um, yes. So when they're moving, even if they're um, and I always recommend getting a line of credit. Do you recommend that as well? Yes, I mean that it gives you that flexibility for your deposit, etc. Um, as well, it's always important to explore the portability options um, with your existing mortgage. Can you port your mortgage to the new property? Um, is it worth it? Um, get, you know, depending on how much time you have left on your mortgage, um, and the fine print with 
porting varies by every lender. Mm. Now, the, the the point where you can pay off without penalty, is you is there a point in your mortgage, like six months, a year before, where you can pay off without penalty? Is that not right? No, mm, no. <laughs> not usually, but... Okay. Um, the penalty gets smaller over time. As yes. You get closer to the renewal. There's a Red Bank, uh, Scotia Bank, um, mm. that uh, up to 30 days prior to your maturity date, they just charge the interest to the maturity date. Versus okay. some lenders, if you pay it out the day before your maturity date, you are looking at a full three month interest penalty or interest rate differential penalty. So all uh, those exactly. things are so important. Okay. This is exactly why you want to make sure you're dovetailing your dates on your sale with your with a purchase. Yeah. Yeah. So um, are you finding right now, like are people, have they got their ducks in a row or what kind of conversations are you having with people who are looking to like either be first time buyers or who are selling and, and buying? Are they qualifying themselves now? Are people savvy? I would say most definitely people, I've got a lot of pre-approvals um, with people just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with rates um but i you know i've got rate holds in place for them um and then i've got i've had a number of renewals that people are wanting to or planning to sell their um, current rental property they have etc due to the new airbnb rules etc so definitely i think um it's going to be a a great year um from a real estate standpoint a lot of listings anyways that's good to hear are you fine Thank you, Jen. Uh, are you finding, well, actually, if if you could take a moment and tell us, what do you expect the variable rate to do this year? And what do you expect the fixed rate to do this year? I think right now, fixed rates, if we look, well, looking at the next sort of four to six months, fixed rates are going to be stalled until variable rates drop. Um, Variable rates start coming down. I'm I'm hopeful for April based on all the other stats that make up like what's happening in the labor market, unemployment, etc. Um, if interest rates start coming down in April, we expect kind of or even June it to be a quarter percentage point, and then another quarter percentage point. So hopefully by the end of the year, we're going to see one to one and a half percent um, rate reduction. So it's definitely in looking at it's opened up um, lots of people exploring variable rate mortgages again to take advantage of those future rate drops. Okay, so, so you mentioned me... you you mentioned that people are coming in at um, uh, they're coming up for their renewals and they're considering um, selling. So they're looking at are they like, they're doing open mortgages then? Like yes, these people yeah. So you're seeing a lot more open mortgage, so they can yeah. off, be flexible. That's a good indication that that we will be, yeah, busy for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's say, so what? Let, let's just expand on that question that Andrew asked. So I'm I'm using myself as an example. We know we have a mortgage renewal coming up in November. So uh, one of the questions I actually have is. Do banks kind of have sales quota that they like to meet? And, oh, you know, let's offer a deal now to get more mortgages. Um, or do they have something like, um, you know, this is the way the policy is. It's going to be rigid for the next year or so. Interesting question. So I can go <laughs> back to when I was in the banking world and I can tell you that everything absolutely there is everything is um uh, measured. Measured. Yeah. absolutely everything so um you're they're measuring your the amount of mortgages coming going um new credit cards absolutely everything on an individual branch level and then you know uh, nbc etc cetera, etc cetera. um and you're constantly compared to other provinces when i was in the banking world um, what does fluctuate is based on the amount of volume 
banks put in different categories. So if they're doing a lot right now, let's just say they're doing a lot of um, conventional mortgages, meaning someone has more than a 20% down payment, there are certain buckets that the mortgages go into. And um, when your mortgage is up for renewal, if that bucket is relatively full, you're not going to get an aggressive interest rate um, um, offer for renewal. Whereas right. if that bucket isn't full, um, you may get an incredible rate. Because every once in a while you hear of people that they say, well, not every once in a while, all the time, you know, oh, I got this great rate with, you know, whichever bank, the green bank. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, wow, that's that's an incredible rate. Well, what was the parameters around it? Okay, well, they must be really looking for, or, you know, looking to fill that bucket. Oh, gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Do you, a lot do you of find, uh, what's, Go what's the, what's going on with CMHC out there? Um, is there anything on the horizon in terms of, um, any changes with them that you're seeing or, um, their lending practices or CMHC, I know they have, they also, yeah, they, they, they also have like a, programs, you know, um, mm -hmm. that are available, um, for, uh, first time home buyers, um, you know, converting your home to uh, more energy efficient, et cetera. Um, but nothing new that I'm okay. aware of anyways. Um, okay. hmm. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You think that, cause that's sort of more government run. They think they'd be moving some things forward if they could, but I, I just I know they have a quota around how much they can lend, and I think that they kind of were reaching a ceiling at one point, and then yes. they expanded it. Um, yes, they were. So they restricted their um, uh, qualifying ratios um, for individuals that no more than forty-two percent of your um, uh, gross income could go towards all of your monthly debts. But there is two other. Um, default mortgage insurers. So basically it didn't really, it basically reduced the market for CMHC, but increased the market for Sajin and Candidate Guarantee, which are the two other insurers. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So wh what's your prediction this year for your own business? I am hoping that um, it starts increasing in the once interest rates start coming down i'm looking forward to um, an increase in business i have been i've definitely slowed down right now um as lots of people are just kind of just waiting so mm -hmm. it's, i expect to be a similar year than that i had last year but definitely a big pickup towards the latter part of the year is what i suspect mm. what's your prediction so. andrew for this coming year well, I feel, I mean, again, if things go as, as Jen is mentioning that, you know, we're going to see some interest rate drops. I think we, we're already seeing more positivity in the market as people are kind of feeling like the pressure of um, the threat of the, the, the hammer in front of us with the higher interest rates uh, coming up every few months uh, being, you know, less likely, much less likely. It's now looking like it's going to be dropping. People will be much more likely to be buying and, uh, going out for their mortgage. And and for that, that means we will see a really busy spring. Um, we may see a busier than normal summer. Uh, if we see some good drops in the fall, which is probably the most likely spot where we see the bigger drops, then that would also I mean, I'm sure they're waiting to see what happens with this spring, the Bank of Canada, before making some decisions around the fall. But uh, I think we'll have a fairly steady busy year. And I do think prices are going to come up. I think we're going to have a run on the market. I think people are going to wait maybe a little bit just to see what's happening um, with interest rates. I'm interested to see what the banks decide to do with variable versus fixed. And um, obviously, I think the choice right now is to, to choose variable and then perhaps lock into fixed a little later on in the year. What would your opinion be on that, Jen? Yes. Yeah. Going variable. Um, I mean, unfortunately, myself, 
speaking from my own personal experience, I would have loved to have locked in my um, own variable rate uh, before all the increases, um, but I didn't. So now I'm really looking forward to these um, rate decreases. <laughs> It's good to know, Jen, that you're in the same boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Darn it. Why didn't we catch this? But, um, you know, that's that being said, you know, a lot of, back in the day, people would be, and I'm assuming your business in this is much lower now, um, is where people actually break their mortgage and, and to get a lower mortgage. But that obviously isn't, there's no desire, there's no reason to be doing that for the last little right. while. Yeah. So that, that segment of your business is probably completely dried up. That's going to start, we might start seeing that again in the next couple of years. What do you, Most at what point would you say that that's sort of a trigger point that makes sense to do? Once rates What's, start coming down, for sure, people will start yeah. um, wanting to refinance, pay off those credit cards or, uh, you know, high interest loans. Um, whereas, yeah, this past year, there was not. Um, that refinance piece of my business was very limited. Um, mm. You know, so yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to an increase in that side as well, and helping people, you know, helping people out, getting rid of their high interest debts, increasing their cash flow, um, you know, with their utilizing the equity in their home. Absolutely. It would be great to have a U.S. mortgage broker or lender on one of these calls and just look at the difference between the lending rules and how people are coping in Canada and the U S I would love that. That would be a lot of fun. Get dueling, okay. dueling brokers, Jen and someone from the States and yeah. Yeah. Just to see, because I think, um, you know, we were running in a parallel universe during COVID, but then um, now that our interest rates have gone up so high, um, and and people aren't tied into 30 year mortgages like they are in the US. There's just been a divergence, a big divergence in both real estate as a whole and in the mortgage brokering world, I think. Yeah. Huh. The one thing I do know, and because I've been talking to my cousin who lives in Long Island, I loved, I picked her brain a little bit when I last visited her, is property taxes are much higher. Um, in the States um, as a whole than they are here. Yes. Right. But I spoke to a, a U.S. realtor about that. And so yeah. property taxes are related to where you live, right? And yeah. um, if you live in a nice area with lots of amenities, you're going to have higher property taxes. But in um, they have less taxes, uh, income taxes. So this is mm -hmm. why there's have and have not areas is because if you're if the perception is your property is worth more then you're going to be paying more taxes um and though and that goes towards things like local hospitals and stuff like that we pay right. it all federal hmm. Hmm. interesting yeah. it was it was eye-opening to me to realize yes everybody talks about income taxes but they don't realize that property taxes are way higher there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So thank you very much for coming on. Um, let's just get your contact information here. If people want to get in touch with you, what do they do? Jen Lowe. Give me a call at 250-217-4925. Uh, um, email j.lowe at dominionlending.ca or my website at jenlowe.ca. Okay. Thanks for coming. We'll have you on again. We'll bring in a U.S. broker and hopefully we'll be able to um, connect with you. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Thanks so much. A lot. We'll see you later. Hey, so I'm um, just hey. wondering what you have coming up in the market. Do you have anything interesting? Any needs and wants? Uh, we've got, I mean, needs. I, I really could use a single family home under a million dollars somewhere um, East Saanich, West Saanich, preferably with a suite or suite potential. Um, mm -hmm. I could use, what have we got here? Let me look at this. West Shore home under 750. Um, half duplex is okay, that kind of thing. Doesn't have to be in great shape. They're willing to do some work. Um, got some folks coming to town, uh, probably looking for a townhouse or single family in the West Shore. Um, actually single family, probably 1.1. .1. Um, you construction preferred. 
Um, some folks looking for maybe an acreage up to 750 to 1.2, an acreage being like half an acre, quarter acre, not really an acreage, let's say, but some land, um, anywhere out to even Sukish area, although we're trying to keep them closer to town. I've got a, I've got a guy actually looking for um, some sort of future, like a, a holding property. Um, and the budget's up to like, I mean, it could go up into the like 6 million range, but more like four, three or 4 million. Um, for something that will have some future subdivision potential. It doesn't have to be imminent. It doesn't have to be turnkey, but something mm. in the Victoria area that would make a good holding property for, for them to have an investment in the city. Um, Maybe like a sixplex or something. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Um, I think they were more interested in land just because of their own business and how they've, they've got their, their, their company. So they've got some... Um, <laughs> They do a lot of construction, um, like land, anyway, engineering and so forth. I don't want to get into details on that. Um, yeah, and then some more investment folks and a waterfront or great water views in Sydney area. So those okay. are all folks I'm kind of currently looking at. I may have a condo coming up in the Santa Cheese area. I'm still waiting on that one, some other stuff. All right, we have a house coming up with a, uh, it did have a suite, but she took out the yucky um, stove. Um, it's coming up in View Royal. So that'll be uh, early next week. Um, the price on that will be just under a million. And then we also have um, a listing that's going live today. And that's a, a one bedroom, one bath. And it's in a triplex. It's on Vancouver Street, and the price of that is six seventy nine nine. It's uh, six hundred ninety nine square feet, and it has its own patio, parking, and uh, a garden space at the back. So uh, that's it's really super nice. It's like a a block to Street Village. It's really really nice. It's a renovated character home. Renovated Beautiful. in ten. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anything else you want to add today? No, I'm, I'm complete. How about you? Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I just want to remind everybody we are on every Thursday at 930. If you have any questions or comments or topics that you want information on, please give us a call. Andrew, how do people reach you? Uh, I'm at 250-360-6106. You can phone or text. Info at andrewplank.com is the email and check out my website, andrewplank.com or my Instagram, plank, Andrew, no space, no underscore. <laughs> and if people want to reach me, I'm Jane Johnson with the Bar Hill Group at Remax Camosin. My number is 250-744-0775. My email is briarhillgroup at gmail.com. Don't forget to visit us on our website at briarhillgroup.com. And we also have these videos and more at victoriarealestateshow.com, also on each of our YouTube pages. And please uh, follow me. We have a new Briar Hill Group Instagram, as well as my personal one at realtyteacher underscore remax underscore Victoria. All right, buddy. Take care. We'll see you later. Thank you. All okay. right. And thanks again to Jen Lowe for coming in. Yeah. Um, thanks, right. Jen. See you, Jane. Bye. Bye.